Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white aura deck featuring four copies of Archon of the Wild Rose, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This 4-mana 4 4-4 four, four flyer says other creatures we control that are enchanted by auras we control have a base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, and have flying. So Archon can be an excellent finisher in a deck like this, where we have multiple creatures that can produce the various aura roll tokens from Wilds of Eldraine. So they basically come attached to enchantments, and then we can eventually fly them with the Archon of the Wild Rose, turning them into 4-4 creatures to hopefully close out the game. And then uh, Archon does lead to some pretty interesting rules interactions in this deck. If we play Spiteful Hexmage on turn 1, for instance, it will be enchanted by our own Cursed Roll token, turning it into a 1-1. And then later, if we play Archon, it will turn it into a 4-4 flyer, which is great. But if we already have Archon in play, and then play Spiteful Hexmage, which will get the Cursed Roll and put it on itself, let's say, then it will still be a 1-1 because it kind of keeps track of which effect entered the battlefield last. In the case of Archon, we get the 4-4s, four in the case of the Cursed Roll afterwards, it will turn the creature back into a 1-1. So sequencing can be pretty tricky with Archon in this deck, but usually we're going to use it as a finisher once we already have an established board full of creatures that are enchanted. Now the Hex Mage is also pretty tricky to play. If we play it on turn 1, of course, it will enchant itself, but later in the game we could enchant a different creature, could put a Cursed Roll on a creature that already has a cursed roll so we only have to keep one of them and then we can also sacrifice the cursed roll to a braids for instance so that we're still left with a 3-2 while getting a bit of extra advantage and then I'm also playing four copies of Concealing Curtains, just as an additional one drop. And for toughness, it's pretty difficult for red decks to take out early in the game, can block and soak up some damage. And then it also gives us a bit of a discard with the three mana ability, so we can maybe take away a key sweeper or some curve topper from the opponent. Then at two mana, we've got a bit of removal with a Witch's Vanity, first destroying a creature an opponent controls with mana value two or less. Then we get to make a food token, and then eventually create a Wicked Roll token attached to target creature we control, so that can give us an extra aura to set up our Archon and other various synergies and just gives us a lot of various permanents that we can also sacrifice to Braids for instance. Then we've got the full set of Lord Skitter's Blessing and this is the reason why I want so many one drops in this deck so we can curve a one drop into two mana Blessing and this will produce a Wicked Roll attached to one of our creatures and then at the beginning of our draw step if we control an enchanted creature we lose one life and draw an additional card so this can kind of be a two mana for X in Arena while also producing a Wicked Roll which is great but it does require us to always have an enchanted creature but that's usually not too difficult in this deck and then we've got the full set of spellbook vendor to two vigilance for two and at the beginning of combat on our turn we can pay one mana to attach a sorcerer roll to one of our creatures this one lets us scry one when the enchanted creature attacks in addition to giving plus one plus one so the vendor can also be a consistent source of additional roll tokens can also replace the various cursed rolls that come attached to the hex mage or the courtier so we can actually upgrade them into sorcerer roll tokens instead and then Ossification is also quite synergistic in this deck. Just make sure to have enough basic lands to enchant in the first place. And that's why I'm not playing the black channel land and just a white one. Still have 13 basics. And then Ossification also counts as an aura, which is important alongside Ariat, which will drain the opponent at the beginning of our end step, equal to the number of auras we control, as well as getting that much life. So that counts all our aura roll tokens, but also a card like Ossification. And then we mentioned Braids a few times, a great way to sacrifice some of the cursed roll tokens that we have throughout the deck. can also sacrifice our food tokens or other enchantments and often drain the opponent while drawing extra cards in the process. And then two copies of the Cursed Courtier. This one also comes attached to a Cursed Roll token. Unlike the Hex Mage, we cannot put it anywhere else. So it always comes attached to the Courtier. So if we play it after playing Archon, it will still be a 1-1. If we play it beforehand, it can be upgraded into a 4-4 Flying Lifelink, which can be very nice in a racing situation. And then our mana base includes plenty of dual lands, including two copies of the new Restless Fortress, a creature land that can help close out the game by draining the opponent, and then one Eye Ganjo, which can also be channeled, potentially getting a discount from our various legendaries. And to mix it up today, I'm going to play this in the play queue, so we hopefully see a wider variety of decks. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Could play Curtains on one, turn to Hex Mage, Enchant our Curtains, or we can... Uh just play Hex Mage Enchanting itself. If we're planning to transform Curtains turn 3, which currently might be the case. Against the red aggro, going for Curtains early also makes more sense. It's 
Gonna be a Blood Feather Phoenix. Could eventually come back. So exiling it with Ossification might be the better solution. Could also Witch's Vanity. Then this would be Enchanted in two turns. In the meantime, play the Courtier. Although we still need an extra white source for Archon. So let's just Ossification. And then we'll see next turn if we want to transform curtains or double spell. It looks like red black instead. Invasion of Argatha. Luckily, can't kill our curtains. And there's our second white. So now it may be worth it to play the courtier, setting up for Archon next turn. Or we can check if the coast is clear first. And then make it more likely that we can keep our courtier around. Okay, could take the play with fire. And then we'll hit for three. And then next turn, Hex Mage plus courtier. Hex Mage can also target the courtier, so at least we'll have a 3 2 left over in case they answer the Archon. And yeah, now with Monstrous Rage, they can actually transform Invasion, thanks to the hasty Felden. So, a bit of a concern. Pono now has Disciples in play, which would uh, increase the damage from their Cell Sword as well. Vanity can destroy Felden at least, so that's probably the play. And then Hex Mage enchants itself. Problem with playing Courtier after Archon is that it would still be a 1 1 as opposed to a 4 4 because of how timestamps work. Kumano also quite effective with the Disciples. Yeah, I'm gonna take it, but this is gonna hurt. And our opponent using the Cell Sword here. It does sacrifice the 6-6, uh, six, six. it's not like it still deals two more damage, which is good for us. Okay, want to get our Life Linker down as soon as possible, and then we can still sack the Food Token so we don't die to a Burn Spell. And then next turn, we should be able to hit with a large Life Linker, hopefully. Probably best to sack the Food now. And there's a Cell Sword. And then we'll have three enchanted creatures to go with Archon. Kumano's fine. So enchant our Revealing Eye. Vanity kill Cell Sword. And Archon has an awesome finisher here. Get in for a nice 13 damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We could use a few more cheap creatures to go with double Lord Skitter's Blessing. If I play Vendor, if they answer it, then we're left holding the bag. So, could be a mulligan, but I think I'll still give it a shot. At least we've got Vanity on 2 as a good interactive spell so we don't fall behind. Opponent also with turn 1 Hex Mage in black-white. So they might be off to a similar start. If they play turn 2 Blessing, at least we've got Vanity. Just hits us for one. And hopeful Vigil is next. Okay, Hex Mage, a turn late to the party, but could still play it next turn alongside Vendor. So I kind of want to play a black card here, if possible. So we'll make it Vanity. Take out Hex Mage over the token. I'm sure our opponent has some good synergies with the various roll tokens. Okay, so now we can play Vendor and Hex Mage. And then next turn, Lord Skitter's Blessing to draw extra cards. The uh, Wicked Roll can go on Hex Mage, so it turns into a larger creature. 
as our opponent makes a couple tokens here with the Sugar Maw. They definitely have a lot of things they can sacrifice to it. Would not be surprised to see something like a Bunny Corn in their deck since they have so many permanents to grow it. This attack I'll just take. I want to preserve our creatures as much as possible. Braves is next, makes sense, can sack the Hopeful Vigil. I could sack an enchantment here, and sure, why not? Cursed Roll is gone. So Braid's not quite as good in the mirror match. Not that this is a true mirror, but close enough. So let's enchant the Vendor. And then I can... Blessing... On the Hex Mage. And then I could pay the one from Vendor just to... Drain the opponent with a Wicked Roll. No attacks. This wave they have one removal spell, I'll still have an enchanted creature for Blessing. And we could definitely use the card draw. Opponent's got a Hopeless Nightmare. So, Witch's Vanity is good in the face of Braids, since it provides so many things we can sacrifice to it. Could be that I ditch a Lord Skitter's Blessing, since the damage could add up. But the card draw is so nice. I don't think it's Vendor. So maybe this still Witch's Vanity. And then I can sacrifice an Aura Roll to Braids. Go with the Wicked One. And then we'll still have an Enchanted Creature for Blessing. Okay, Ossification can get rid of Braids now. And we can pay the one. Points go to second braids. At least with double caves, they're taking quite a bit of damage themselves. And then I could sack Ossification, give them braids back. And they only get to keep one. So that kind of worked out. Opponent is happy with both cards. And yeah, time to deploy Archon. And then we're pretty close to threatening lethal. Get to Scry. Don't think I want Braids. Another Archon could be okay. Ariat could also close out the game. Princess takes flight, can temporarily deal with our Archon. Opponent can sacrifice it, so Archon's gone for good. So that's another nice interaction. But uh, it's not gonna matter with another Archon or Ariat coming up. And Ariat, I think, is gonna be my weapon of choice. Pay the one, enchant Ariat, and rain for three. No need to attack. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. Turn one curtains, turn two blessing is one option. Although against mono black, they could have a cut down or a go for the throat to take out the curtains. And then we're left without an enchanted creature. But I don't have any great alternatives here. I'm still gonna go for it. Now a 1-5 at least survives cut down, could still die to a Liliana. Shakedown heavy, I see, so put into fight rigging deck. Well, probably wanna just ossification here, prevent that from happening. And then next turn, we'll see if we wanna deploy braids. Another shakedown. Okay, so if I go Braids plus Hex Mage, I can sacrifice the Cursed Roll. Could also keep our enchanted creatures to um, set up Archon, and then for now just transform Curtains, maybe take away a Fight Rigging. And 
Okay, no fight rigging, but a uh, bunch of removal. Cut down is the only thing that could try and hit my hex mage here. The rest still seems beatable. So I think we decline, otherwise we might draw them into fight rigging. And then hit for four, play hex mage. Enchanting itself. And if they want to cut it down, be my guest. Put a top deck to fight rigging anyways. Alright, we could be in trouble now. Can't uh, thought seize the top of the deck, as it's called. And a Gix's commands. Yep, that's gonna wipe my board. Opponent going for plus one counters instead. And then I guess we don't want them gaining nine life. So they can draw. Now it's probably a good window to play Archon, so Hex Mage doesn't die to cut down anymore. And then if they Gixxus command, I could sacrifice Hex Mage instead of Archon. Find rigging triggers. Do I take 10? Might be okay for now. Another shakedown. And we found an ossification. So yeah, we can hit for 8 in the air. And then with Ossification and Ariette, we would have a lethal. So, sounds like a plan. Ariette survives cut down, so. Alright, so, close one here against fight rigging, but we got there in the end. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. We'll see if we want to go for turn 1 Hex Mage, turn 2 Blessing, or if we need to play it slow and go for Curtains first. Against turn 1 Forest, the Rot Priest, I'm lacking turn 1 Hex Mage. Don't expect too much removal. And then the life loss doesn't matter as much if our opponent is trying to poison us. Crawling Chorus is next. Probably have to hang back with the Hex Mage here. And then hope they can't remove it. And that's too bad. Annex Sentry. Get rid of Hex Mage. Now we don't get to draw. Take two more poison. So, probably go for Ossification on Sentry now. Get our Hex Mage back. And play Curtains. Opponent's got another Ossification. Goes for Curtains so they can keep attacking. Although now we still have an Enchanted Creature for Blessing at least. So yeah, I'm gonna take four and two poison. Another hex mage. So probably go for hex mage enchanting the current one. So we'll have a three two, and then hopefully one enchanted creature suffices. Could also play courtier and then hex mage enchanting the courtier. But I'm thinking Ariette is the play here. Definitely a close call. Maybe I should go Courtier plus Hex Mage and then have a 3 2 and a pair of 1 1s. Problem is, our opponent gets to pump the team with Slaughter Singer, so I think we need some larger creatures on defense. And then we only have the one enchanted creature here, but it's okay. Can provide another one next turn. And this is an aggressive attack. So I wonder if they have Iganjo here, or maybe some other pump spell. And if that's the case, 
Probably still Ariat on Singer, Hex Mage on Rock Priest. And then they can kill Ariat, keep the Slaughter Singer, but still lose Rock Priest. Sure. It's gonna be completed Devotion instead. Okay, that's pretty good. Draw a card and apply an extra poison with Rock Priest on the way out. And a Contaminator, that's a scary one. Backup area, it's nice. And a Vanity. Okay, so we can kill Singer, play area. Although we'll still have to find an answer to the Contaminator here. So that's two more poison coming our way. And now a Rot Priest. At least Ossification doesn't trigger the Rot Priest. But now any poison and we're dead. Find Braids and a land. So plan is Courtier, Braids, and then I have to decide what to sacrifice. Probably going for an enchantment, although keeping the extra auras would help for Ariette. But I also want to grow my team here, so I think we sank the Cursed Roll on Courtier. So now we've got a pretty good defense setup. Opponent could sank the Ossification, but decides not to. And a Tyvor stand is lethal, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Multiple removal spells, and then a creature with a good mana sink to try and take over. Put on mono black. And the crown's next. Okay, so play vendor. Next turn we can pay the one and play another two drop. Trespasser would require us to discard a card. So maybe start by using the vendor's ability. Could also play Hex Mage and then pay the one on Hex Mage. So um, it grows a little bit. Or we can make vendor a 3 3 attack and then if they want to trade, that's fine by me. And I could play another vendor afterwards. And do we want a third one? Probably not. Bodon takes it. Yeah, let's just play another spellbook vendor. And then if they equip with crown, we just want to exile their creatures so crown doesn't trigger. Go for the throat kills our first vendor. So we will take a bit of a hit. Okay, with the land I can play Hex Mage. And then Hex Mage can enchant Vendor. Vendor pays a 1 to get rid of the Cursed Roll. And then we can still also vacation the Trespasser. And a Blessing seems great if we can keep our creatures around. And then which is Vanity? Probably the most situational here. Also vacation good for exiling Shieldred. Gonna be a processor next. Okay, so we can double spell blessing and ossification. And our opponent has seen enough, yeah, they're pretty far behind now, and we get to draw extra cards onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn to 
either Vanity or Vendor, depending on what our opponent presents. And then I'm not sure yet if I'm playing Braids on 3. Since we might want to have a creature enchanted already before playing Braids. Wayfinder from the opponents. Okay, so now Vanity, pay the one from Vendor, looks good. Make sure Wayfinder doesn't snowball if our opponent removes our one creature. And then now playing Braids looks better. Happy drawing a land. So I could play Braids, pay the one. It's gonna be a Stomper next. And then we get to hit for three. And we want to planes, sure. And then probably sack the sorcerer roll on braids itself. Could also sack the food token, I guess. Next turn we will get a replacement aura, so maybe keep the food token around. Point's got a Vorinclex, which we can also vacation. And Archon was a great draw. Other opponent does have a reach creature back, so it's going to be ossification. Hit for seven, and then probably go for a courtier. Sacrifice the cursed roll, making this into a three-three life link, and then the next turn we could play archon and pay the one from vendor to make this fly as well. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has promise. Turn 1 could go for Hex Mage, and then if we don't face removal we could have a 4-3 attacking and drawing us extra cards. Definitely has the highest upside. If we're up against a red deck where we can expect burn spells, then we might pivot and play the Curtains instead. Turn 1 Islands, so they could have a Fading Hope here, although it could also just be some other cantrip. So I think we give it a shot before they can counter my blessing. Hit for four. That seems to work. And now we've got our card draw engine online. So we get to untap, draw an extra card, find a creature lands, and a vanity. So Hex Mage attacks, play Curtains, and a tap land. And then next turn we could have a look. opponent did have a Serum Snare, but decided to wait. So at least we got to draw a card in the process. And then... I guess I regret not uh, playing an extra Swamp last turn, in case I had to double spell and play a tapped land. I guess we'll just wait on the Restless Fortress and go Curtains plus Hex Mage. And then Hex Mage can enchant itself, I think. Or do we prefer Curtains if we're not planning to transform it next turn? It won't be able to attack anyways. I guess that also makes sense. And against blue, we don't need to have high toughness necessarily. Opponent with a Witness Protection on our Curtains and one on the Hex Mage. Well, we still have our Blessing drawing us extra cards. And now we could resolve Archon, which... He's going to have a pretty interesting interaction here, turning Business Person into a 4-4 that can now attack. Because it's no longer a defender, thanks to the Witness Protection. So yeah, Archon definitely makes for some interesting rules interactions. Thinking of the interaction with a Courtier and Timestamps, determining whether it's a 1-1 or a 4-4. And yeah, that's enough for opponent to concede. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems acceptable. Missing a few auras, perhaps. For now, Hex Mage, turn two curtains, tap lands, and then Braids can sacrifice the cursed roll. Facing red aggro. Could go with another Hex Mage, put the 
roll token on the same hex mage. Or we could just have two one ones, so we have more sacrifice fodder for braids, and eventually more enchanted creatures for Archon. Close call. I think we just play another hex mage, enchanting itself, and hit for one. Now, if our opponent keeps up a lightning strike for braids, we'll have to adapt, but it's going to be a spell spear instead. Okay, so just gonna play Braids here, I believe. And then sack a roll. Next turn, Archon could still fly the Hex Mage. Or we could play Curtains and Transform. Opponent for now transforming the Spell Spear, which is pretty scary. Ariad could also be good. So we have options. If I play Archon, I can attack with a whole team. And then still sank the roll afterwards. And I don't think our opponent's interested in trading here after transforming Spell Spear. So they'll be at 3. And then we're a bit light on uh, enchantments for Ariette now. But uh, they still need to deal with Archon. At 17, can we die to this Spell Stalker? It's not impossible. Maybe I just block Phoenix Chick. And uh, we'll see what happens. If our opponent can give Spell Stalker double strike and has a monster roll, then this would grow up to, let's see, would get plus 7 power. So 10, double strike, yeah, that would be lethal. But, um, yeah, it's not super likely. Blazing Crescendo is plus 3. Alright, just take 8. And a Swiss Peer second main is not going to do it. Okay, so just turn our team sideways. And that'll do it. Maybe should have taken a look with Curtains to see what else they were working with. Definitely a unique take on Mono Red Aggro. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable, if unexciting, hand. Definitely need another Black Source for Braids. And then Vanity, better on the draw typically than on the play, since we want to take out two drops with it. Okay, Lord Skitter's Blessing was a good one. And that's also why I put such a priority on including an extra 1-drop in this deck, so we're more likely to have that curve of 1-drop into Blessing. Find Hex Mage and a land. Perfect. So, could already play Braids, although if we sank the Wicked Roll here, we wouldn't draw with Blessing anymore. So maybe I do play Hex Mage and then Vanity, just to get more stuff in play for Braids. Could have also transformed Curtains, but I think that can wait. Having more enchanted creatures also good for Archon. Opponent ramping. And an invasion on turn 3 here. So now might be a good time to use Curtains to take away any 7-drop they might cast. Or do we go for Archon? I think we need to have a look. Okay, Fight Rigging, Oddity, Tortoise, Bushwhack. So our opponent can play, let's say, Oddity and Fight, although this is a 4-5. Fight Rigging could be a concern with a larger creature, but for now, not the end of the world. So, could let them keep everything. They don't have the mana to play Oddity, Fight Rigging and Bushwhack, but that would maybe be a concern later. So out of all these, Oddity is probably the scariest. So maybe that's still worth taking, even though we potentially give them something even better.
opponent could still fight with a likeness of the Seeker. But we've got a good setup now for Archon. If I draw land, could also consider Vanity plus Braids. And yeah, Titan of Industry, Tyrannix Rex. So plenty of scary 7 drops that we dodged. But Fight Rigging might try and reveal. Although they still have a long way to go to get a 7 powered creature. Counter on likeness. And no land. So we could roll on Hex Mage. And then I think we fly over. Since I don't have the mana to Vanity plus Braids to deal with the likeness. So may as well fly over and apply maximum pressure. Now they can remove the Archon with Fight Rigging putting another counter on likeness. They'll have a 5-5. Five five. But they are down to 8 in the meantime. Warchief can gain some life back. Still doesn't get to 7 power at least. And now if they fight it would be a trade. So I'm kind of surprised they didn't go counter on likeness and then fight Archon. Since now they'll have to trade away a creature. But maybe they wanted to get to 7 power for fight rigging a bit sooner. So they're just going to fight with a likeness and trade instead. Okay. So their opponent's at 11. No backup Archon. No target for Witch's Vanity. And yeah, we can't really interact using Curtains to disrupt this fight rigging plan. So they will get to cast whatever they exiled. But I can attack with what I have. Put on probably trades Hex Mage and Tortoise. Takes 4 down to 7. And then it's still anyone's game. This one has Menace, so that's not going to work. I would actually be happy with a double block if we can take out Warchief. Then now we can finish off the token with Vanity and we don't have to worry about fight rigging as much. So Vanity the token. And Braids can either sack food token to guarantee two damage or we can sack an enchantment, and then if they get rid of fight rigging, we're happy. I think it's food token. The fact that they didn't keep Warchief kind of implies that fight rigging didn't exile anything too impressive. A loam speaker off the top. And that's probably not going to do it. They can transform invasion if they'd like. Tordus goes face, but now we've got an Archon to fly over. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So close one here against a green ramp. So yeah, we got to see this black-white aura deck in action. And while I didn't play the games in the ranked ladder today, still got to see some very nice synergies. And overall, Archon seemed like a nice way to close out games in a deck like this. So it does give you a bit of a reach alongside Braids and Ariette to close out games where the ground is a bit stalled. So yeah, overall, deck seems decent. Not sure if it's going to hold up on the rank ladder. Should be reasonable enough against some of the low-curve aggro decks, since we've got lots of toughness, a bit of life gain, plenty of removal. But against the more mid-rangey and controlling decks, I don't expect this kind of strategy to hold up very well, since our opponent can just kind of one-for-one one our creatures early on and take over with more individually powerful cards. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.